The dark cabal, hurting us like sheep, is only able to maintain its power by staying invisible. The most effective way of maintaining invisibility is, and always has been, the art of dividing the masses. This psychological operation, known as divide and conquer, has been deployed for all of recorded history because it works, especially with organized religion, which is ruled by dogma rather than a personal relationship with God. Dogma is a belief doctrine dictated by a church, and if you were born into a dogmatic family, then you are raised to believe their dogma. As a result, you will see all conflicting religious dogma as evil. You will be divided and conquered. The main religions used to divide and conquer mankind are the three Abrahamic religions. Judaic dogma teaches the Jew that they are a member of the chosen race destined to rule over everyone else as a teacher of God's law. Islamic dogma teaches that all of mankind must somehow submit to Islam. And while there are reportedly 40,000 different denominations of Christianity, most Christian dogma teaches that Christians will live in paradise for eternity while everyone else burns in hell. Many people raised in these religions have been able to personally connect with God and liberate themselves from the device of dogma. But many others are stuck in group mind think. They conflate Holy Scripture and a priest class with God and put their faith in a doctrine written by man. It has become the most powerful form of mind control. And so whoever controls the Holy Land controls the world. In Revelation 2.9 of the King James Bible, it warns of the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. We are beginning to see this today with the Zionists who say they are Jews and are not. With the help of the United Nations, the British Crown, the Vatican, the Nazis, and the Rothschild banking dynasty, the land formerly known as Palestine was conquered with bloodshed, lies, and bureaucracy. The Zionists, who claimed to be secular, declared the land to be Israel, home of the Jews, and successfully thrust the once thriving Middle East back into the Middle Ages. The relatively peaceful region was soon transformed into an unending war zone. Decades of U.S. war crimes radicalized many of the Muslim population into becoming the creation of the State of Israel in 1948 would have never been successful if it were not for the Jewish Holocaust. Even though the Palestinians had nothing to do with it, the Holocaust was effectively used as an emotional excuse for what would otherwise be an illegal land grab. And while few deny that Hitler was Jews, many have pointed out that six million would have been logistically impossible. So why the number six million? For several decades preceding World War II, the Zionists repeated the mantra, six million, referring to the death of six million Jews. A six followed by six zeros can also be read as 66, which can be read as two thirds. Certain radical of Judaism and Christianity believe that two thirds of the Jews must perish. It appears as if the Zionists created Israel as a sacrificial altar to make this happen, repeating the lesser magic mantra of what they want to make manifest. Today we are seeing Zionists begging for calling out to kill them all, and gaslighting us into thinking there never was a Palestine, while saying we should flatten it and turn it into glass. We are seeing Christian pastors cheer for mass pastors saying that Israel should make the Gaza Strip a parking lot, and several evangelical pastors who speak as if Christ will only return if we provide him the blood sacrifice taught in their extreme dogma. As Israel pushes forward, radicalized young Muslim men who have had their homes destroyed by American bombs are now spread throughout Western nations. The stage is set for the Holy War, and many are willing to murder in the name of their dogmatic beliefs. Extremists of all three religions are being used by the hidden hand to foment this war, while the Catholic Church has been making preparations for a one-world religion solution. Divided, we will be conquered, but united, we could learn to live as one, in peace. The origin of Friday the 13th has its roots in the ongoing Holy War, specifically Friday the 13th in October which is noteworthy, seeing as how a worldwide Islamic Jihad 
has been called for today on Friday the 13th in October. The Knights Templar gained wealth and power by fighting as mercenaries for the Catholic Church during the Crusades. Their headquarters was in the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, on Mount Moriah, where Abraham built an altar to sacrifice his son. King Solomon's temple is a central component of all three Abrahamic religions, and especially in Western occultism. The Templars were officially known as the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon, or Templar Knights. Masonic lodges are based on the Temple of Solomon. Kabbalah teaches that the Temple of Solomon represents the metaphysical world and the descending light of the Creator through the Tree of Life. The Templar Knights wore white mantles with a red cross, a symbology that can be found throughout the history of the Catholic Church and its offshoots. The rebuilding of King Solomon's Temple is a crucial goal of many religious groups and secret societies. The Templars were not only expert warriors, they were also pioneers in an early form of banking, and arguably one of the world's first multinational corporations. They acquired land throughout Europe and the Middle East, including the island of Cyprus. They owned and operated several farms and vineyards, they built massive stone cathedrals, and they had their own fleet of ships for war and for the import-export business. When Jerusalem was recaptured by Muslim forces in 1187, the Templars were forced to leave the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount. But they still managed many businesses and wielded much power. King Philip IV was deeply in debt to the Templars and began pressuring the church to take action against them. At dawn on Friday the 13th of October 1307, Mass arrests were carried out against the Templars. Claims were made that the Templar recruits were forced to spit on the cross and deny Christ. They were accused of worshipping Baphomet and a mummified head believed to be that of John the Baptist. Dozens of Templars were burned at the stake and the order was officially dissolved. The Temple Mount remained under control of Muslim forces until the British captured it in the Battle of 1917. Thirty years later, the United Nations gave the land surrounding the Temple Mount to the Zionists, and the State of Israel has been encroaching upon it ever since.